Hi there and welcome. Today we're taking a look at this laser personal computer 110. This is made by uh, VTech in Hong Kong and uh, it was about the same age or maybe a little bit later than the ZX Spectrum. This one I just got it off of eBay and it came with this uh, cassette recorder which is also from, uh, from laser. Unfortunately it didn't come with a power supply and um, that's a normal way to sell stuff on eBay if it doesn't work. You just pretend that you've thrown away the power supply and uh, therefore it's not tested. Um, but anyway, let's just first of all let's try and power it on and see whether we have uh, any video, see whether it works. So this machine needs 9 volts in, there's a standard uh, DC uh, plug down here. So I just um, did something, uh, uh, just connected my bench top power supply and uh, yeah, there's a light in the LED here. So uh, maybe it's working. Let's have a look at the TV, see whether there's anything. The video seems to be flickering quite badly. Uh, but it says video technology, uh, that means VTech Basic 1.2 and ready. The computer also has a monitor output. And um, that looks fine in the sense that I can see the, the output on my oscilloscope. That looks like there's a TV or video signal. But uh, I connected two different uh, monitors and they didn't show any picture. But uh, anyway, we have video and uh, let's open it up and probe around a bit and see whether we can improve on it or whether it's just my TV that is playing up. Okay, anyway, before we open it up, uh, I just tried... ...pressing the keyboard and not all keys work. You can hear this annoying beep sound. So, yeah, the machine is in this uh, beige and brown color with uh, some, I guess they're orange buttons. Um, the command entry is similar to the Sinclair, that means there's a, a command on each button. So you don't have to type P-R-I-N-T, you just press the print key here. Um, on the left, on the front, and uh, there's nothing. And on the right side, there's an on-off uh, switch. On the back, there's a DC 9 volt input, tape, uh, cassette for storage. Uh, I have, as I said, I have the cassette player here. Um, there's a monitor out. There's a, a plate that's blanking off, uh, a connector for memory expansion, and the same for, for peripherals. And uh, finally, the TV output over here. And uh, yeah, while I'm removing the screws on the back here, I actually found a switch at the bottom here, and I think that is for setting the TV channel. So maybe it's possible to get the standard UHF output here. And whoa, we're in. And uh, yeah, look at that. As you can probably see, the keyboard is 100% identical to the, um, to the Lambda series of machines. But the internals are uh, is definitely different. I can see the Motorola 6847 uh, video output chip here. Okay, so I got it opened and I removed this uh, metal screen here. And I think uh, I need to swap out all the capacitors at some point. So uh, for the time being, I will, uh, when I put it back together, I'm not going to put in the screen. First we have the Z80 CPU, and uh, that was of course used in a lot of machines back in the early 80s. Um, then we have a little bit of glue logic, a couple of uh, 7.4 LS chips. We have the 6116, which is a 2 kilobyte RAM. And then we have two ROM chips, and uh, they, are, they are 8K each. So the basic interpreter in this machine would be 16 kilobytes. Uh, the keyboard is uh, controlled via some diodes, uh, which is basically the same way that the Sinclair did it on his ZX uh, 80 and 81. And then on the left we have a 6847, which is a single chip a video uh, generator. And uh, that of course needs some uh, memory for the screen memory, and that is this one here. Which is another uh, static RAM uh, 6116, so there's 2 kilobytes of RAM here for the screen memory. Uh, everything of course is driven by this uh, crystal here and uh, there's a little trimmer so you can get uh, everything right. Apart from that we have a little bit of uh, logic over here and uh, these are all different kind of counters. So they would generate the power signal for this chip here. Uh, as far as I know this, this machine here is uh, black and white so also there's no PAL uh, encoder on this board here. So yeah, all in all it's a very simple little machine that uh, basically anybody could make. Finally, we have something interesting here. We have 8 resistors here for the data bus. Because uh, when this chip here is generating video, it needs uh, complete access to this chip. 
And uh, of course, if the CPU tries to write to this chip at the same time, uh, that would crash uh, the video output. So uh, what they did was, and uh, what Sinclair also did, was to put some resistors in between. So this data bus here and this data bus here, they can kind of run independently of each other. So the CPU can write to this RAM here and do some calculations and whatever. And uh, only when uh, this memory is free, not being used by the video chip, that means during the, the vertical and horizontal blanking, then the CPU can access the screen memory. So instead of having a lot of logic, they just put a couple of resistors over here uh, to isolate the two buses. So that is a really clever little idea that saves a lot of money. I'm going to clean up the gold connectors on the keyboard here. Now I got the keyboard out of the frame and actually it's 100% identical to the Lambda keyboard. So either they bought it from the same supplier or they are actually the manufacturer of the Lambda machine as well. And uh, that is possible actually uh, because when you look at the machines how closely they resemble each other. Um, this one of course doesn't have the Sinclair compatible um, ULA or ASIC chip but otherwise they are very very similar so it could be that VTEC was the manufacturer of the Lambda machine uh, as well if anybody knows uh, please uh, leave a message below so yeah unfortunately after cleaning the keyboard it still doesn't work and um, that means something must be wrong with the address decoder on this machine here so basically the way I think it works is that uh, these resistors here are pull down resistors and um, they are connected to the keyboard uh, matrix here and uh, basically what happens is that when the CPU tries to read the keyboard it will read these uh, pulled low uh, lines here. Um, but however if the CPU uh, pulls one of these lines higher here uh, it can do that one by one through this diode matrix here. Uh, so when it pulls one of these high and is shorted on the keyboard here uh, it will result in a high uh, on one of these resistors here and uh, that will be read through this 74 LS244 um, there must be an address decoder that will uh, enable this one and I guess it's one of those chips up here there's only just a few things that can go wrong here it could be one of these diodes here so we have to ohm these or, uh, or do a diode check on these and finally it could be the 74 LS244 here that has some issue so I switched off the machine and uh, I'm gonna do a diode check here Beep, it beeps when the diode is uh, shorted. So this one says 0.6 volt on this diode. 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0.6, 0
So basically it seems to work, but it doesn't work for all the keys. So now we're looking at the back and uh, as you can see there are quite a lot of barge wires. And uh, to my understanding there was a Laser 100 uh, which had less ROM and less RAM. And then there's this one, the Laser 110, which has a little bit more ROM. It has 16K of ROM, but the basic would take up 12K. In the previous version the basic took up only 8K, so there was only one uh, ROM circuit here, uh, one ROM chip here. So uh, there are some botch wires here to get the address and data bus running on this memory here. And uh, then there are two signals here from the CPU to the I.O. ports and uh, there are wires soldered in here. And uh, underneath here we have the 74LS244. Okay so I swapped the chip for another 244 and uh, I put it in a socket just in case. And it's a little bit better but not much. Uh, the logic is working now but the keys are still not 100% correct. I know that because if we look at the keyboard itself, it's basically a matrix with some columns and some rows and uh, we have the columns on one side and the row on another side and uh, if I short a column to a row using a little piece of uh, metal wire, we can hear it beep. Beep. So using this method, I have actually uh, managed to I managed to check out that the the electronics on the computer is actually now working, but the keyboard still has some problems. So I did what I should have done right from the beginning. I should have ohmed these uh, resistive tracks here. See this board? They're using a single-sided PCB, but uh, when there's a, a, a track crossing. Uh, they're using some conductive ink here. So I'm going to ohm these and uh, typically they should be around 200-300 uh, ohm. So if we look at this one here for instance, the impedance is... Uh, this one says 3.6 kilo ohm. So that is way out. And uh, this one here... This one here says 4 ohm, so that is perfect. And uh, this one down here says 100 ohm, so that is fine. This one here says 300 ohm, no problem. So this one here, 8 mega ohm, so that one is not correct. That one is open, almost open circuit. Actually, I don't have any um, conductive ink, so I could rewrite, uh, repaint these. But uh, I do have some of these very, very fine copper wires. And I'm going to solder those across uh, instead. And that should work just as well. Uh, the only thing is I mustn't make the the, the, the the solder pad mustn't be too thick because uh, there's this rubber there's this rubber uh, membrane on top. So uh, yeah, I'm going to short out these uh, conductive ink strips uh, and uh, then I'll be back. Okay, so I'm done. All these ink printed uh, jumpers. I've shorted them out with those little thin thin wires. So if we take the membrane and put on top, uh, it should be working. And indeed it is. So, problem solved. I will put it back together and uh, plug it into the TV and see what we get. But uh, it should be all perfect now. And uh, yeah, we have a nice little video picture. As you can see it says video technology, basic 1.2. And uh, I heard it was a copy of a Microsoft BASIC. Uh, they didn't actually develop their own, they just removed some commands so they wouldn't have a lawsuit. But uh, Probably they used the Microsoft BASIC from the Laser 50, which was an earlier model. And uh, that one for sure has a Microsoft BASIC. But uh, anyway, uh, the keyboard should be working, so let's type in a little program. And uh, see whether we can uh, get something. Print. Hello world and the keyboard works great. Oops, let's see if we can eat the run. But no problem, it just works fine. And uh, control break and we're back again and uh, enlist, enter and there's our little program. So yeah, everything is good. Uh, thanks for watching and see you again real soon.